Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel, Feed It Technology with me, Dito. Today in this video, I want to show you how to create a two-dimensional cohesive element in Abacus. I found many of my colleagues uh, having difficulties modeling 2D cohesive elements in Abacus. Sometimes they have error, they have convergence problems. So I want to clear that up in, in this video, especially when it deals with the packing directions in cohesive elements. So let me explain a little bit. So when you have a surface, one surface, then you have a cohesive element connecting this. Let's say this is part number one, and then there is a part number two. And then you try to make a cohesive element here, right? So in Abacus, you need to tell them. Uh, so what Abacus did is basically they will calculate the separation between these two phase, which is delta. And this delta is going to get bigger as the loading increases. For example, you pull to this side. So, and then once you get the delta, you will calculate the tractions through the traction separation law, which the shape can be like this, for example, the bilinear law. So depending on the value of the delta, you can calculate uh, the value of the tracks uh, the, the tractions, for example, and then you can start having damage when you uh, pass this maximum stress. And the problem is that you need to define the stacking direction. So stacking direction means that you need to define, you need to tell Abacus which direction that are going to separate physically. So for example, in this case, is this, for example, where is it? This this line and this line. So if you see here, actually uh, your cohesive element has four sides, right? One, two, three, and four. So by default, Abacus can make mistake when they decide which direction, which stacking direction that are going to be used. It can be the surface, surface one, which is this one, and the surface two, or it may be the surface three or the surface four. So if your stacking direction is between three and four, this is actually wrong because you don't want this separation. This is not the separation that you're looking for to calculate the traction. The separation that you're trying to, that you need to, to, to find is this separation, this separation between, between uh, the surface and the surface this separation that you need to know. So in Abacus, you need to tell them because your element is uh, having four sides. So you need to tell in Abacus, oh, this is my cohesive element between this face and this face, not this face and this face. So how to do that? For three-dimensional element, it's easy. You have options in Abacus to, to define stacking directions. Stacking. Uh, directions but uh, in two dimensional it's not straightforward you cannot just simply click that button for 2d elements so that's what we are going to explore in this video all right well let me check first if my hobby is recording or not oh it's recording good so now let's start by by doing it step by step, uh, you can open your abacus and then create model. And uh, so let me explain a bit about the model. So what I'm going to make is basically a, a simple 2D problems. It's a it's a beam where the length is around 200 millimeter and the width is 25 millimeter. Okay. And then I'm going to either, uh, fix this part. And while this one is the loading one, either I can pull it to this side later, or I can just simply pull it in the in this axial directions. So, and then the next step that I will do is I'm going to give a cohesive element, which is here. And then I will show you later, if you don't do anything, the default stacking direction that has been assigned by Abacus to this element will be 
from this face this face wrong so we need to fix that we need to tell abacus that my cohesive element actually connecting this surface the red surface and this surface because this is our first part and this is second part not this and this okay not that one but this one i hope it's clear and this one so let's make the model now create part d planar and we're going to use deformable and shell okay and okay just click continue and then we choose this create lines with four rectangles point or i don't create lines rectangle with four lines so you click here it's the origin and you need to type here down below here it's uh, 200 by 25 then click enter then you will have this rectangle and then you click x here and click done see here the part this here the part but in this part it's just still like one part but there's no way that we can assign a cohesive element here in the middle so what we need to do is basically we need to make partition and click here because this is a face now they're they're basically a two-dimensional face uh, so now uh, what we need to do is we create partition uh, face partition face by sketch okay so click here because you only have one part they they go directly like this and you just click from here here and you click escape and you click here from here to here click escape then you want to make sure that this is too big for a cohesive element so you want to make sure you're, because the cohesive element is basically just for uh, making this uh, this crack so you want to make sure that this crack has almost zero thickness or if you want to model adhesive for example imagine uh, the one on the right is uh, another part and the one on the left is other part and then you are gluing them with with a glue that has finite thickness for example 10 millimeters you can make the the distance 10 millimeters but in this case i just want to model a crack that has a very very low thickness or even like almost zero thickness so i will give this value 0 0.001 and they should close each other. And here, they are very close if you zoom to each other. So, because we want to model a zero thickness crack. So, here is cohesive element you see here. So, the next step is you go to the model part, uh, the properties, uh, and click here the materials. Uh, so we need two materials here. Uh, let me control Windows Shift S. I want to explain a bit about the model. Uh, so if I paste here, so I'm going to call this the left one. This part number one, part number two. This is made from aluminium with uh, young models around seventy thousand MPa. Poisson ratio 0 0.2. This is the same. While for the cohesive elements, I will just use a standard a cohesive element uh, parameters that I, I remember. <laughs> that they, they closely resemble the data from literatures. Uh, okay, so now we need to create two materials. First is the aluminium, AL, alum. Uh, I can some elasticity the yarn model is 70,000 and the Poisson ratio 0 0.3 and the second material is the core mat is if material uh, we have elastic now uh, the only difference is here uh, before we use isotropic now we need to use traction because when you're dealing with cohesive element, you need to use a traction separation law. So this is the place where you need to change type traction. Okay, there are so many options here. You can read in LSD, uh, no, not LSD, Abacus manual, but for this time, I will just simply choose traction for using a cohesive element. So this is the stiffness values 
So when you're dealing with a cohesive element, there are so many options to use these values. If you're modeling an adhesive, a real adhesive with a finite thickness, the value that you need to put here is basically the value from the material parameters. So you need to do a tensile test, you get the stiffness, you put that value there for the adhesive, okay? But if you're modeling a crack, so your cohesive there is not for modeling adhesive, but for modeling a zero thickness crack that may appear there in your structure. In that case, the value that you choose here is a mathematical value, it's not material parameters. It should be something that the value should be very big, but low enough so that it will not disturb the convergence of your simulations. So if you put this value, for example, 1 e to the 10, your simulation may not work. Because if you read detail, there will be a problem with your Newton Vapson. It will suit the, 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 uh, the prediction, the trial stress out of the, the ball of the convergence of the Newton Vapson and so on. But uh, I will not explain in detail here. You can read the literature. But the idea of using this for uh, modeling crack with zero thickness, you need to put large value here but not that large so that it will disturb your convergence. So choose a reasonable value. In this case, the way I choose it, 70 MPA, 70,000 MPA is the stiffness of this, how you call it, the aluminum. So to make it more stiffer, I will just put it 700,000. It's 10 times stiffer than the aluminum itself, right? I hope it makes sense for you, so you understand. Otherwise, uh, if you want to search more detail about the topic that I just explained in literature, uh, you can search in Google a spurious compliance problem. So if that value is B, but you're modeling a zero cohesive elements, you will create a problem called uh, spurious compliance problem right so study that in detail later by yourself i will not explain here because the video will be that long so let's come back again so i already if you click here the material manager i already create two materials and now i want to make sections the first section is is the shell homogeneous section First one is the solid homogeneous, okay. Materials is aluminum, click okay. This, the second section is basically a sh the other. Yeah. So if you want to assign section for cohesive element, you need to choose here, other. There's option here for cohesive and then click continue. And the material, you need to put the cohesive material and the rest ones using traction separations and just click OK, just accept this default. Okay, and then you need to assign, assign section. So for this one, say it is our set. I renamed the, the name of the set, this Albin aluminum set. Click done, section is in section one. And then for this one, I will create section two, click done. I click section two. Okay. Okay. So you see here, if you already assigned your materials, the color of the part changed to like this Tosca color. And if you change this coloring scheme to materials. So here, there are two different materials, right? One is using cohesive materials, the other one using aluminum materials. So let's back again. Now everything good, let's make assembly. Let's click OK. There's nothing uh, different here, special here. Step for the step, you need to, we're going to use the classical static general case. Uh, and then we're not going to use, uh, you can turn off nonlinear geometry, but that's not the point of this video. But the most important when you're doing, when you're doing, when you're simulating something uh, related to damage, fracture, Sometimes your simulation is really difficult to converge. So you need to add some kind of stabilization to the algorithms. 
So in this case, I recommend you to use this one. Uh, so there's a, you know, this kind of uh, dissipation stabilization, which is 0.2% of the total one, which is very small, I think. And then for the minimum time step, we need to increase to minus 10 because as the damage start to occur, so usually you need to, uh, to running the simulation at a very, very small time step because there is energy release happening at the high speed. So in order to capture that energy release, uh, the abacus needs to simulate things in a very, very minimal time step, time increments. So this is okay. And then you need to also allow abacus uh, to, to, to use more number of increments. Uh, 10,000 is good enough. You will not use this 10,000. It's just that you want to make sure that your simulation will end until completed, will stop until completed. You don't want, for example, you want to simulate until, uh, for example, one second. For example, here, our total simulation time period is one second. You don't want to have the case where your simulation st uh, stops at 0 0.9 second just because you don't allow the number of increments to be more than 100, right? So I just want to make sure that we put maximum that we have here, 10,000. You can have 10 million, but it's not it's useless. <clears throat> All right, that again. And then this is the advanced topics. If you see my videos on, on other cohesive elements for the 3D or the PPR cohesive elements in, in other videos that I already upload, please check the video if you want to know more detail about cohesive element modeling for three-dimensional problems. Uh, usually I use this general solution control. You click manager, you click step one, click continue. So what happened is basically when doing iterations, Abacus has like, you know, a general settings. The general setting is basically Abacus will, will try to do some iteration until four, eight or five times somewhere in the code, in the looping, right? So if you cannot, uh, I call it, if you cannot, achieve convergence when you reach this level uh, because we'll give you a warning oh okay guys i already try as much as i am allowed to try four eight or five times but still no convergence so error now so abacus will say that oh maximum time increments uh reach something like that so if you know your problem is really difficult to solve you are recommended to change this guy in this case, I recommend you 20, 40, and 20. If you want to know more about this, read the Abacus manuals. I'll just show you how to change and where to change. And then for the field output, because you want to make animation, for example, you want to plot load displacement curve. So you want to have several data points so you can get like a curve in time history. So of, for example, uh, time history of the load loading of the time history of the displacement of this uh, point, for example, for example. So you need, in my case, I, I'm usually I'm using evenly spaced time infer intervals. The default is basically uh, they will create output every one increment. So in each one increment, uh, they will create one data plot. So if your simulation needs thousand or even ten thousand increment you will have ten thousand data plots which sometime the the odb file the output file will be way too bigger in gigabyte size you don't want that to happen because sometimes you just need 200 data points that's all what you need so in my case i will say that even the space time intervals and i need 100 data points and that's it and because i want to show the counter plot for cohesive elements uh, I will make this guy, or is it SDEG, scalar stiffness degradation, because, you know, come back again to the traction separation law here. Once you pass this maximum stress, your stress will soften. And then if this is E0, then you reach this guy, and then when you unload, and then when you load again, you will have the stiffness, which is E1, where the E1 is basically 1 minus d e0 and d is the value of your damage which can range from 0 to 1 when d equals 1 0 e1 is equal to e0 it means no damage 
When D equals 1, it means that it's fully damaged. So this SD here that I show you here is basically the value of D here formulations. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And now, uh, again, the same thing here. Uh, the first one is the field output about, for example, uh, the output about stress, strain, everything. And uh, now here is basically more about energy or other things. Uh, usually, I, I use uh, history of food for the energy. Uh, I want to, to know where my energy has been dissipated. Is it in the plasticity? Is it in the damage? You can turn this on and then you can check later at the end. In my case, I'll just 100, the same as before. And then interaction. You don't have interaction because you only have one part here. Uh, you you can model cohesive element using interaction, contact, uh, contact behavior, contact surface, but that's not what I'm doing here. I'm using cohesive elements, not cohesive surface or cohesive behavior. No. So now I make the load. For the load, I will create a boundary condition here on displacement. This is the fixed set, fixed set, click down. I will constrain everything, zero. While this guy, so where is here? Load set, the set where I give the load. And then this, 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 and this one I will pull. Two, for example, two millimeters in the x directions, and this is ten millimeters the y directions that negative. So I will pull it down. So you understand? So basically, I'm pulling it down like this. All right. So what's next? Next is the mesh. This is the most important. Uh, you can just simply create here seed part, or oh, you need to go to part before you do the seeding. Seed part, the, the value that Abacus recommend is 6.3. Here we're using cohesive element. You want to use the smaller value so that it's smooth enough. Quite good, right? And then, so if you want. So here, somewhere here, I forgot where. Uh, if you go here, materials. Uh, should I? Okay, here. So here, basically, there's cohesive element here in this part. So if you want to assign stacking direction in three dimension, three dimension elements, you can just simply click here, assign stack directions. But for 2D case, you cannot do it. If you do it, you do it, they say the power, the part here does not contain any geometric cell. So this button, you can only use it for 3D geometry, 3D solids, okay? But here is 2D phase, so you cannot do it. So how you do it? So basically, uh, just to show you the problem, if you do it here, tools, query, and then you say it, uh, mass stack orientation here. You can click here and see here that oh, in this case it's good. In this case it's good. So this guy now the the arrow is to the x axis means they are they they are good in this case. So you don't have to do stacking corrections. Oh, so in this case we are lucky because but uh, yeah. But oh, that you let, let me come back again to the part. I know this is because our geometry is simple. Okay, Some, uh, in, in many cases your geometry will not be like this. Or you you do many partition. For example, imagine if you want to do pattern. So for example, for example, okay, uh, let me copy. I already copied here. Where is this note? Okay. Again. Imagine here your interface, and then this is okay. So imagine that you want to make a cohesive element model. That this is 
that has a very strong uh, maximum stress. It's very strong maximum stress. So you do patterning in your cohesive elements in your surface that you want to glue. In this case, it's a crack, but imagine you want to do it something like this, like a patterning. So what you need to do to be able to assign a different properties from this part to this part, to this part, to this part, you need to make, for example, a partition. So you need to make partition. When you do this partition, your your stacking direction may be affected. For let's try. I, I show you before, right? Uh, for for this kind of uh, this one, this is this is good. You can see here all of them. Uh, showing the stacking direction in x direction, so it's already correct. But once you do, once you do uh, pattern, uh, uh, how you call it, partition. Let's let's say I'm doing partition to this face. Okay. So let's make. I want to. Let's say I want to make one, two. I say that uh, this is 25, so this is 10. This is also 10. So basically, I'm doing partition. If you want later, you can have another cohesive materials stronger than the one that I already make, where uh, the part here is stronger. This is weaker. This is stronger. So you can have as many patterns as you as you want. But the idea here that you already make additional pattern uh, partition just to be able to select this face, this face, this face. Otherwise, there are only a single strip. You cannot choose only this much or this much or this much, right? We can choose this much because we on we make some partition here, here, and here. All right, but what happened when you do partition is that if you check again your uh, stacking directions, I need to go to we need to go to meshing again. See here now they cause problems. Now your stacking direction changing from the x coordinate to this much. So be to this direction to the horizontal directions so what happened is basically if you have cohesive element slanted this way abacus will think that you want him you want the abacus to calculate the separation between this face and this face which is wrong because now you're still connecting this side right and this side so you want to make sure that you correct the stacking direction for this problem before you run it otherwise it will give you wrong solutions so you need to make sure that the stacking direction is this direction not this direction okay so how we do it how we do it in, in abacus you should be able to do it like this for 3d case for 2d case you need to do this one so what you need to do we remove this guy okay then you also remove this guy, click done. So you only have these cohesive elements and they have this, uh, this prob problematic uh, stacking direction. So what I want to do now is basically, uh, I want to, how to say, I want to assign as control. So what I'm going to do is to use mesh control assignment. I'm going to use quad only and I'm going to sweep. So here I want to sweep from my left side, from my left side to here. This is my algorithm when, when sweeping the elements. Currently now, because we sweep this direction, that's why maybe the stacking direction is following this line. Now I want to sweep like this. So that it will fix the stacking orientation. Let's see. Redefine sweep path. So here you see the arrow is going here, which is wrong. Uh, so you want you cannot accept the highlighted. You want to select new, 
then you create here and then you click yes and then it will ask you again for another partition this one which is wrong also so you want to click here select new click here and you want to flip you want you just want to make sure that they are in the same direction you click yes and the third one is the middle one which is also wrong select new and then you click here and click yes so now they are correct delete create mess again yes and then you return everything to normal so now you might have a question Dieter. what you did was just correcting the stacking directions for the strip cohesive the cohesive elements what happens stacking the, uh, to the stacking direction of these normal elements? For normal elements, they don't really care about the stacking direction because you're not using separation to calculate the traction or the stress. You're using a interpolation displacement of all nodes. So they don't care about the stacking direction in that case. Yeah, because you don't calculate the separation of two surfaces, but you take care the displacement of all nodes to calculate the uh, the strain and then from the strain you calculate the stress so in that case for normal elements you don't even care about the stacking direction uh, but make sure for the cohesive elements they orient it correctly okay to the x direction okay i hope it's clear for you guys then you need to assign element type for this guy this guy uh they're basically plane strain the default is plane stress, so make sure I'm usually using second order accuracy. Then enhance our glass control just to make sure I don't have any problem. Okay, and then I will assign again for the cohesive element. I can choose here set because I already have a set before aluminium set. Oh no, set number two. And I can continue. I can tell him now it's not plane stress, it's actually a cohesive. And then click OK. Done. So now your model is good. If you check again, mass tech directions, uh, other element pointed in the y direction, stamp it a little bit. While here, it's already correct in the x direction, so there's no problem. So this is really important. And the technique that I just mentioned here is only possible if you have simple model like this. So you can have manually doing sweep path manually and set the swift path for each partition. Now imagine if you're doing micromechanics, if you read one of my work in, for example, this micromechanics, where you have a hundred of fibers. For example, you have model RV like this, and you have fiber, 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 and between fiber and the, the this, this is the fiber, this is the matrix, and then you have this cohesive element, which is very, very thin actually, I exaggerate the picture here. So imagine you do it like this, you have 100. Of course, there's no way you will manually set the sweep path like that, sweep path like that, sweep path like that, manually from, from here to here. So you need to help, uh, you need to use the help uh, of, uh, of a Python script or a MATLAB just to make sure that you set the in direction that's really important to do that okay and then now let's do running a job read job new session i'm going to use four to make it faster that's it i'm click okay and then click manager and then i click submit and then i will pause my video and i will continue after it finish okay submit Uh, you can click here. It's submitted now, and I hope it's not error. It's oh, it's running now. Okay, so let's just wait. I will pause. Yeah, guys, it's completed. Yeah, it's like this. So this is the correct one. See here, the the contour is smooth. Everything is set correctly, right? It's so nice, guys. It's really really nice. But then I, I realized why there's no crack here. And then I realized, oh, I, I haven't for I haven't input the, the value for the cohesive element. It's just elastic. 
there's no damage you can add them uh, so I'm using quadratic stress criteria for example they will damage at 20 and then shear at 30 you're at 30 30 MBA can create damage pollutions and I like to use energy usually if you have uh, only one value of energy you can put it here is for example 0.5 or if you want to use the BK values so or the, the fracture energy are different in three directions, you can put you can use there's so many mixed mode model, but I usually using BK. For example, 0 0.5, this is 0. Point, usually 1.5 because the shear usually is around three point uh, three times the, the mode one. The, the mode two is three times the mode one. And then I'm using the power, which is usually the power is around 1.2 and 1.4 for the BK model for CFRP of GFRP. You don't have the data, just choose this value 1.2 until 1.4. And then I'm using stabilization. This is again when you're doing crisis development, you have a lot of damage, it's really difficult to simulate. You need to have some damping, fiscal regularization, whatever you call it. I'm using this 0.0001 just to speed up simulation okay and if you check again it's already very good now let's do the, the running again i will click submit again and i will pause it okay yeah, guys uh, so now we'll come back again it's completed let's see the result okay and then let's check it uh, yeah so now it's break you see so if we play the videos here, uh, let's large. It's nice. So basically, first they will have this elastic loading, and you see here that the interface you cannot see that there is interface there because uh, the the stress contour is really good. It's actually here this light, yeah, and then it start to broke. When it start to broke, you can check here the S deck. This is the number of damage, which is the value is now getting one, right? Yeah. So basically, it's broke. You might think the why there's the the cohesive element is not deleted. It's because maybe I forgot to to delete element options. So if you want to go back to this mesh uh, here, set to there is element deletion. And if you click yes, and then they will. They should delete it. Let, 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 let's see. I can run it for you again if you want. And submit, click OK. And then I pause for. Yeah, let's come back again. It's already finished. Let's see. They should. Oh, they still don't delete it. I don't know why. So. Yeah, here it, it, it's good now. Uh. So basically the S deck now it's getting one. So the, the, the failure is really easy uh, because I I put 20 MPA if you want we can make it larger to make more deformations. Uh, for example, if I put 60 and maybe 90 and 90 and, and the damage evolution. I will make it uh, maybe two and six and six, right? Make it more difficult to damage. So let's see. And click submit. Okay, while it's running, you might wondering Dito, how how to get these values uh, for the cohesive elements. So if your model, uh, as I said before, for the elastic. Depends on what you do. If you're modeling zero thickness uh, crack, this value should be a mathematically, I'm uh, sorry, this value should be very high because it's a mathematical parameters. Modeling adhesive, you can check from the tensile test and then you can calibrate these values depending, uh, match the slope, right, of the tensile test results. And for this one, it's from the, uh, for example, from the tensile test, so it should match what is the maximum stress that you can reach uh, during the norm, uh, during the mode one mode two mode three and how about the damage evolution for damage evolution you need to do a dcb test double counter lever cantilever beam yeah dcb test or in the shear mode you need to do a 
PNF and notch flexural test. Basically, this is for mode two or mode three, and this is for mode uh, one. And how to get this power, you need to use this mixed mode banding test, MMB, I think. Yeah, you can read literature how to calibrate these parameters, or you can take literature uh, values from literatures, yeah, for common material like carbon epoxy or anything. You should have it. I think. Yeah, you see here when. Before I don't have it here, this is the time increment as you see here. From first is 0 0.01, and then it's when the value gets smaller, it means more difficult to simulate. Why? Because now, uh, your your track, uh, your cohesive is way more stronger. So when it starts to crack, it will propagate very fast. So to capture this rapid crack propagations. You need to have this small, small, how you call it, or uh, time increment. But I, I, I hope it will converge. Otherwise, it will error. But let's see. I haven't checked it before. I just try an error to make this clear. I don't have time to, to do it first before I record it. But that's that's the idea. If it's error, uh, you need to make smaller model. Uh, I mean, you need to allow smaller time increments before you check here in the step. I only allow until uh, 10, uh, minus 10. You maybe make minus 15, or you need to increase the damping stabilization. Maybe it's not 0 0.0002, maybe zero, like this one. So remove one zero, so you add more, ten, the damping 10 times. It might be easier to, to simulate. Oh, come on. Okay. So let me pause first video because it's done. Yeah, we're lucky now. It's finally converged. So after very difficult in, in making convergence, as you see here, 10 minus 7, 10 minus 5, it's getting bigger again. Then it returns to normal because now it's easy to simulate because maybe guys have already fully fractured. Let's see. Now it's completed. Uh, result. Okay. Yeah. You see now you have more bending before doing the fracture. Yeah. Okay. That's all for now, uh, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click subscribe. Uh, because it's really uh, meaningful for me. Uh, before I close this one, let me check. Imagine uh, you ask me it's how to plot load displacement curve from this one. So for the load, you can create here, uh, create XY data, ODB output. I will be very fast, continue, and I will click unique nodal, unique nodal, okay, and then reaction force. And you want to have reaction force in the Y coordinate, so I should, I check RF2. And then I choose, so I check. All these nodes because all these nodes are the, the the fixed one, and then I save it. Click OK. And if I do it here, operate on X Y data because I have all this data, which is the reaction force for all the nodes in in the in this guy, right? The one on the on the left. So you want to make sure you you sum all of it. Yeah, you need to do brackets and then in the middle of it you go here click save and then do it like that and then add to expression and you can save it and then this one have if you click here you will have this and then this is the summation you can plot it and this is the data with respect to time you want to do a displacement you can, you can do it again you choose the note that you want to check the displacement and then you can click the displacement here, and then you can you can get the displacement with time. Then you copy the data to Excel, and then you can plot the force displacement. I hope you can do it yourself. And that's it for today's video. I hope it's useful. Please subscribe, guys, and please comment. Uh, if I can answer your comment, I will answer it. Uh, okay. I hope I can upload videos sharing about my knowledge to human mankind. So it'll be more useful. 
and that's it for today thank you very much bye